Hi everyone, welcome back to Learning English Pro. I'm sure you've seen many vocabularies for the bathroom before, but with this video I am promising you a truly comprehensive lesson with over a hundred terms in the word list. Make sure to check it out in the description and revise the glossary after the video. Let's jump straight into our lesson and our first word of course is the bathroom, which come in many different shapes and sizes. First up, we're going to take a look at the thing which gives the bathroom its name, the bathtub. It is called the bathtub in American English and in British English, it is simply referred to as the bath. Another synonym for this object is tub. It is very common when having a bath to have bubbles in your bath. This is the white foam at the top of the water. A bath with bubbles is known as a bubble bath. Our next item is sometimes a toy and sometimes decoration, the rubber duck. The rubber duck is often associated with having a bath. Babies often have a smaller tub to have their bath in, and this is simply known as a baby bath. Some baths will have a feature like a jacuzzi, which pumps out air bubbles. On screen, we have what's called in American English, a faucet. In British English, this is known as a tap. And from the tap or faucet, we get hot water, cold water, or a mixture of the two is warm water. When water leaves the bath, it does so through the drain or the drain hole. To stop the water escaping down the drain hole, we use what's called a bath plug or a stopper. This is usually attached to the bath with a chain. Next up, let's talk about some products we may use while having a bath, like soap. In liquid form, this may be called bath gel, or sometimes you may hear it called a bath oil. When in doubt, it's best to simply call it liquid soap. Another fun product you can add to your bath is a bath bomb. When added to a hot bath, they add color, bubbles and essential oils. Have you ever wondered what a bath is made of? Well, I'm here to tell you. Modern baths can be made from thermoformed acrylic, porcelain enameled steel, fiberglass reinforced polyester, and finally porcelain enameled cast iron. Let's turn our attention to the shower. There is plenty of English words to learn here as well. First up, we have the shower head. This is the part of the shower from which the water emerges. There are lots of different types of shower head. One which is growing in popularity is this one, which gives a rain shower effect. The faucet, which operates the shower water, is known as the shower valve. Sometimes this shower valve will be connected to the shower head with a shower hose. You can typically enter your shower through a shower door, which is commonly made of glass or plastic. If a shower is over a bath, it will typically have a shower screen or a shower curtain. This stops the water splashing around the bathroom. A shower without a door or a curtain is known as a walk-in shower. When you're using the shower for safety, it's important to have a shower mat. If this is in the bath, it's known as a bath mat. These provide you with grip and prevent you from slipping. And what else might you need in the shower? Some people use a loofah. This is a natural product used to clean the skin, but this word may also refer to something like this, which can also be known as a shower puff. Another product we use to clean ourselves in the shower is known as a sponge. Sponges can be both organic and synthetic. Like a bath, in a shower, we can also use soap. Liquid soap for the shower is commonly known as shower gel, 
but you can often hear it referred to as body wash or even shower cream. And for washing your hair, we have shampoo and conditioner. For those who like to remove hair in the shower, you may need what's called a razor blade or a razor. And if you're doing this, it's a good idea to have shaving foam as well. This is the white foam-like substance which makes shaving a bit easier on the skin. And for after a shower, you'll need a towel. I know this word can be a bit tricky, so let's try it again. Repeat after me. Towel. And where do we keep our towels? We generally keep them on a towel rack. A small towel for drying your hands is known as a hand towel. A towel which is even smaller and used to wash your skin is known as a washcloth or a face cloth. A larger type of towel which we stand on after a bath or a shower is known as a bath mat. We use the term bath mat to describe other types of mats which we use in the bathroom which are a little bit more like carpet and thicker. And on the subject of the floor of the bathroom, most bathroom floors are covered in tiles. Getting back to towels, and another large type of towel which we wrap around our bodies is known as a bath towel. It might also be referred to as a bath sheet. Let's move on to our next area of the bathroom, which is the toilet. I have already produced a video on the toilet with lots of explanation in English about locations, phrases you might need for the toilet and lots of additional context. So check that out after this video. The link is on screen and in the description below. Let's take a look at the different parts of the toilet. The part that holds the water is known as the cistern. And usually to be found on the top or side of the cistern is a button or a handle, which will flush the toilet. Let's take a look at the lower part of the toilet. First up, we have the toilet seat and the toilet lid. Moving down, we have the bowl. And the very bottom of the toilet is what we would call the base of the toilet. A product we use with the toilet is called toilet paper or toilet roll. It is stored in the bathroom on the toilet paper holder. To clean a toilet, we commonly use a toilet brush. Products we use to clean the toilet can be called bleach, detergent, or simply toilet cleaner. Something which can be found in some European countries is the bidet. The T here is silent. This is a French word in origin, so it is pronounced a little bit differently than you might expect. The bidet is used for cleaning oneself after using the toilet. The next item in our glossary is a trash can. This is what is called in American English. In British English, it will be referred to as a bin. For washing your hands in the bathroom, we have the sink. This can also be referred to as a basin. With the sink, we have the same vocabulary here as the bath with the faucet or the tap and the stopper. Above most sinks or basins, you'll find a mirror. Some people find this tricky to say in English, so let's say it again, mirror. Water vapor that hangs in the air and sometimes clings to a mirror is known as steam. Some mirrors will have a space behind them where you can store medicine and other products. This is generally known as a medicine cabinet. Most bathrooms will have some type of shelf. It's usually near the sink or attached to the mirror. It may also be referred to as shelving. A product which we all use at the sink or basin is toothpaste, and we use this with our toothbrush. We keep our toothbrush in the toothbrush holder. 
A more modern form of toothbrush is, of course, the electric toothbrush. A product commonly used in conjunction with toothpaste is mouthwash. And to clean in between those teeth, we can use dental floss. At the sink to wash our hands, we can use soap or liquid soap. This may also be referred to as hand soap or hand wash. In some bathrooms, you will have an outlet. This is American English. In British English, it is called a socket. This can be used for something like an electric razor, which is used to cut your hair. Another electrical device commonly used in the bathroom is the hair dryer. If you would like to learn more English vocabulary on hair and hairdressers, you should check out my video lessons. The link for those are on screen and in the description below. Staying with the subject of hair, at the sink you may also find a comb, which has a silent bee, or a hairbrush. Another implement we can use with our hair is a scissors. And can you believe it? That brings us to the end of this English lesson on the bathroom. Let me know if you think I've forgotten any words. I'd love to hear from you and maybe we'll have enough words to make a part two. And don't forget to revise the word list in the description below. If you're like me and passionate about the English language and English vocabulary, you should head over to my YouTube channel, Learning English Pro, where you'll find a wealth of resources on lots of different subjects covering lots of English vocabulary. Coming up on screen are some video suggestions just for you, along with the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel, so hit that to stay updated on all my latest English lessons. That just leaves me to say I hope you have a fantastic day, and remember, keep learning English like a pro.